Hi, and welcome to another quick tutorial on the retopology tools found in 3ds Max. In this example, our model is made up of just a bunch of Boolean cuts. So here are all the objects that I made to generate the mesh. If I switch to wireframe, you can see the model actually looks pretty clean. But if we try to do something like add a chamfer modifier to it, you can see that it falls apart on some of these edges. The reason for this is we have several edges that are coming very close to the cut lines and the chamfer runs into those edges. We try making the amount smaller, but you still see that there's still artifacts. We could try adding a weighted normals modifier and it does help, but even with some tweaking, you still see that we have artifacts. Let's just delete those modifiers. And now let's get this set up for retopology. First thing I'm going to do is add a slice modifier because I want to make it symmetrical. I'll hit one on my keyboard to go into subobject mode so I can manipulate the slice gizmo. Let's rotate the gizmo 90 degrees and I'll turn on remove bottom in the modifier. Next, I'll hit X and type subdivide to add the subdivide modifier. I'll set the modifier to use Adaptive, which is one of the new algorithms we just introduced, and I'll set the edge length to 2. That looks pretty good, so we'll go with that at the moment. Now let's add the retopology modifier. Instead of 5,000, I'm going to set the face count to 6,000. Auto edge with smoothing groups is good. So we'll leave that. Let's hit compute. Overall, it's looking pretty good, but I can see some areas where definitely need some help. So let's make some adjustments. I'm going to try setting the regular rise to one. A little bit better, but still not quite. Let's change the depthivity to zero. Okay, that's looking a lot better. Now that we have a clean mesh, I'm going to hit X and type symmetry to add a symmetry modifier. It's going in the wrong direction, so let's choose the axis of Y. And we'll just adjust the gizmo by hitting one to go into subobject mode and get my transform correct, and then be able to type in zero to zero out the transform. Just to make sure that we have a good clean mesh with good smoothing groups, I'm gonna add a smooth modifier. So we'll set this to auto smooths and I'll use a threshold of 35 degrees. We can use these smoothing groups for our next modifier, which is going to be the chamfer modifier. So let's hit X, and type chamfer, and bring up the chamfer modifier, and we'll set the from smoothing to unsmooth edges, and let's turn off the minimum angle. Let's bring the amount down a little bit, and we can see we have a pretty clean mesh. Let's set it to mitering of radial, just to be a little bit cleaner. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and add an open subdiv modifier. Okay, I think that we're looking pretty good, but I see that there's a part right here that I'm not really happy with the way that bottom corner is shaded. So let's take a look at that. Let's go into wireframe. So let's select the retopology modifier and just turn off show and results so we can see what we have. The poly count looks pretty low. Let's hit seven on the keyboard. That'll bring up our our poly count and this is for everything so if we go into viewport configuration statistics we can turn on total plus selection and yes the poly count is really low so let's make the modifier the retopology modifier unique and let's set the face count to something like 150 and run it again and that's much better so now we can go back up the stack and we have a much cleaner mesh for that one part I'm pretty happy with that Let's set the iterations to 2 on the open subdiv modifier. 
and that is how we can generate a clean mesh from a boolean model. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on the new topology tools in 3ds Max, and thanks again for watching.